Sarah Malik is Nuveen's CIO and head of the firm's Global Investment Committee, and she is here to run through it. Sarah, the con controversial is what I was uh, meant in referencing your REIT pick, which, if I'm correct, is this an area where you guys think investors should be for 2023? You mean looking at, did you say REITs? Yeah. Uh, you know, we like um, public REITs. We think that they've ex ex priced in excessive pessimism for this year. If you look at the stocks, they're down significantly more than they are than they usually are during downward cycles. So they've overly priced in what we acknowledge is a rollover in the housing market. And this is important. Oftentimes, the stocks will price in what's going on with the fundamentals well ahead of time. In a cyclical industry like real estate, I think public REITs do look interesting at these prices because they're overdone on the downside. What do you think, Dom? So it's interesting because you mentioned the residential side of things, and there's no doubt real estate is more tied to interest rate markets than possibly many other industries out there. But when it comes to residential, we've seen the rollover and the cool-off in housing prices. The curious part will be whether or not it impacts commercial real estate more heavily than it does the residential market, only because at certain points during COVID, there was such a massive move towards people wanting to invest in warehouse space and, and certain other parts of the commercial industry side of things. Meanwhile, office space really took a hit during that time as well. So there's a real tug of war push and pull out there. But there's no doubt that rates are part of that story. And by the way, it's not just because of the borrowing costs associated with the leverage in the real estate market. It's also because there's now an alternative to investing in REITs. They were always a dividend play, an income play. And now you could get risk-free income for about three and a half to four and a half percent in treasuries. Right. It makes CDs. those real estate. It, right. It makes those real estate investments, by the way, a little less attractive. And by the way, liquid savings accounts are now yielding anywhere from two to two and a half percent. So it's pretty decent. And Sarah, that goes back to the question of why take the exposure risk right now when we're not sure if we're going to be facing with QT next year, even less liquidity in the system. You know, I think that Basically, when you're looking at the fundamentals, and I agree that you need to be selective within uh, the real estate sector. Commercial, I think, does have some structural issues going forward, especially in urban centers. But there's other areas that remain quite strong in the more rural centers and also in apartment areas and um, other residential areas. I think the other good news with real estate, though, is that it's disinflationary. So if you look at the inflation numbers going forward, shelter prices have been a key reason why inflation has peaked and start to roll, roll over, as well as less spending on goods, which was another big component of inflation going forward. Now, the bad news, of course, is wages. Wages remain very high. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a large component of inflation. And that's why we think inflation stays likely higher for longer. And the slope of the decline is not as extreme as maybe the market's hoping for. That's interesting because you guys in general seem to have a, a playbook that is more about recession than inflation risk. So you do think we're going to have kind of these persistent price pressures overall, then what does this boil down to in terms of where investors need to be? So for 2023, the key risk is a recession. And the two reasons why we're worried about it are the impacts of tighter monetary policy and the mixed economic data that we're seeing. And what is that impact on earnings, which are likely still too high for next year, corporate margins, and also the consumer. So how do you build a recession-resistant playbook? Within equities, look at companies like dividend growers. They do have this income component and lower volatility. They still look cheap to us. Outside of it, we actually like fixed income over equities. You can get equity-like returns from fixed income in higher quality areas, such as investment grade. And then outside of public markets, you can look at real assets like farmland and infrastructure. These tend to be more resilient sectors with companies like waste management in them and for infrastructure. And this, again, is fairly recession resilient. And that's what you want yeah. to focus on next year as we do worry about economic data.